broken up. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the episode of The Locker Room. I'm here with fellow podcaster. I wanted to call him a pro, but he's still learning his trade. Justin Horro, what's going on, brother? Yeah, still an apprentice, mate. Um, just like rugby league, you've got a little series going off. That's what happens in podcasts. Um, yeah, you know, just like rugby league, mate, I think you're not a proper first grade until you get to 50 games. So yep. I'll take that into the podcast, and podcast career. And uh, yep. you know, once I notch up a few more, I'll consider myself a proper podcaster. And compared to playing footy... Do you get how much enjoyment? Let's say footy's at one hundred percent, or maybe you get more enjoyment out of podcasts. What's the comparison in, in enjoyment of, of you know knocking out a mad podcast and playing a good game of footy? It's uh, it's just starting again, start from scratch and yep. learning it all, and you know that excitement that you get when you first start when you start your career. Yep. I remember like you know obviously like before cracking into first grade and those first I don't know first season or two mm. when it just feels like you know what am I doing here with some of these players. Um, it's pretty similar to podcasting. Like, are people going to like me? Like, yeah. Do I? Have, what's my point of view? Like, yeah. Do I have an audience? And um, yeah. So it's just that's exciting in a way. And then you know, like, by the time you get to any footy career, it's just basically about you know securing a contract and mm. and finishing up and not you know finishing the game well and not injuring yourself or you yeah. know life after footy. So yeah, this is just a new chapter, mate. And um, yeah, I'm enjoying it so far. It's uh, it's so true. Like this, that you just doesn't matter what you do in those first few whatever. Like if it's you know first few year or two years or whatever the amount x amount of time, you always got this like imposter syndrome. It's it's called imposter syndrome where mm. you you're like you have this idea of what a podcaster should feel like or be, yeah. And you just and in your head you're like, well, I'm not that. Therefore, like, am I supposed to be here? And yet, like, every single person felt that experience. It's bizarre how, you know, that kind of changes. Yeah, it's funny when you listen to, you know, guys like yourself that have been doing it for ages or you listen to Joe Rogan. Yeah. And then oh. you feel that insecure about yourself. <laughs> like, I listened back to probably my first three three or four. Mm. Um, and I had some help with some really good guys that come on early. Yeah. Um, and I was just dissecting everything. I wanted it to be perfect. And I just yeah. realized that, you know, it's just like a game of footy. It's not always going to roll your way. So um, now I don't listen to them too much unless, you know, one of my mates who, you know, I've got a few good mates that listen to the podcast and they might talk about um, something in particular that we spoke about. And then I'll go back and try to try listen to that. But yeah. Um, I think you can overanalyze yourself, yeah. just like in footy. So, um, like I said, Ice gives me a few tips, which has been good. Yep. Obviously, he's the he's the reason I you know got into it. So, um, you know, he's always fighting about the office when we've got guests in. So it's been good. It's uh, I think also some of the beauty in podcasts is the imperfections and the, these pathways that open up that wouldn't open up if you were very like everything was structured. Mm. And I think that sometimes, yeah, like as you said, you overanalyze it and you lose that ability to the unknown unknown, the past that exists that you don't know exist. And then there's like known unknowns. Like for example, you might ask a question, you know that the question's there, but you get the answer and it's kind of a path that you know exists. So I think, yeah, the beauty, like you look at, we were talking about Joe Rogan, like he talks for three hours with no script and some of the most crazy content you've ever heard in your life has come out of the unscripted imperfection of a podcast. Yeah, he's on a different level, obviously. Like, yeah, obviously. Yeah, yeah. The, um, you yeah. know, where he is mentally and like, I think... He's uh, like listening to him for a while. He's always said that um, you know people consider him like an intellect, and yeah. you know he's pretty smart. But he he always just says he's got a really good memory, so he's got a, he can just keep everything posted up there. Where at the start when I first started doing the podcast, I had uh, I'd have a board in the background, so yeah. I had like everything written out and the whole the yeah. way the um, podcast wanted to go. Yeah. Um, now I've just got three or four points yep. and I'll just have it on a little piece of pad, uh, pad in front of me and if we don't get to it we, we don't get to it like, I'm not too bothered now yeah. it's just I sort of just let the conversation flow yeah. so there's just like a little basis of you know where I think we should be going and um, you know some points that I think are important yeah um, you know, doing doing the NFL NBA podcast, it's there are a few there are a few stories I want to talk about that have happened in the NFL NBA yeah, so absolutely yeah we try to get to those if we just can. kind of like a, a like a broad kind of skeleton to build on really yeah. that's, that's really kind of all you need um so take us back to a young fella where'd you grow up um so i was born in auckland new zealand yep. um my dad played um my dad played nrl he yep. came over to Parramatta when i was three yeah um he actually well actually we went first we went to the uk he did a year at salford yep 
Um, and then we come to we moved to uh, Parramatta. Oh, out, we moved to Penrith and you played to Parramatta. Okay. Um, you played there for four or five years, and then um, would so you cons- would you consider yourself a Westie? Well, I'm a full on Westie, mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, I can't. It's hard to. Um, I'm, I'm a very proud Kiwi, New Zealander. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I ever got the opportunity, um, I think I got, well, I did. I got the opportunity to play for the New Zealand Maldives in 2010. Yeah. Um, one of the highlights of my career. If I ever got the chance to play for the Kiwis, I put my hand up for that during during all that time. And then, um, you know, never written down that I wanted to play City or Origin or whatever. When you know, when you get those, it's even though it might have been unre- unrealistic. You, every team gets those um, a sheet and you fill out yeah, you know, who yeah. you want to represent and all that yeah. sort of stuff. So, um, so I'm a very proud Westie, but a very proud Kiwi as well. Yeah. Um, and then Dad went. We left. Went back to Auckland for two years. Dad played for the Warriors um, to finish off his career. And then we moved back straight back out to uh, Penrith when we got back and, you know, um, cut my teeth out in the uh, Penrith comp playing footy. You're actually the perfect person to ask and it's, it's good timing because so basically, you know, I put up a post and like with Sonny Bill coming back and obviously, you know, Sonny Bill, one of the greatest ever to play the game. And I was like, just imagine if you played Origin, you know, the, how crazy that would be. And my, my position being an Australian is that, you know, you have to choose Australia to be a Queenslander or a New South Welshman. But there was people in the comments section that, would be, that were in a similar situation to yourself. They said, look, I love New Zealand, but I've also got a lot of connection to New South Wales and, and Queensland or whatever. You know, why can't I be both? What's your feelings on, on a guy that is a proud, you know, proud Kiwi, but you also have a deep connection to Western Sydney and, and New South Wales? Yeah, so if you'd asked me this question when I was younger, mm. uh, one guy that in particular stands out is Carmichael Hunt. Yep. I couldn't understand that for when I was a kid. Yep. Um, I grew up with my dad playing for the Kiwis. Uh, he was, you know, growing up and watching the hucker was the pinnacle for me. Yep. I loved all that sort of stuff. Um, and I just couldn't understand it when I was younger. Um, I, I don't know when Carmichael started playing. I must. I would have been about fourteen or fifteen. I think two thousand and four. Yeah, two thousand four. Yeah, yeah. Pretty sure and I hated Carmichael. <laughs> okay. I hated. Him. But then, as as the years went on, yeah, um, you start to understand the business side of it as well. Yeah, um, very the different times of mo- then as well. Yeah, there's a lot of money to be made by playing Origin and all those sorts of things. So, um, one guy respected. Um, Immensely with his decision was Kieran Foran. He's a good mate of mine. Mm. I reckon Kieran awesome. would have had the opportunity to play probably ten years at New South Wales Origin oh, with definitely. Piercy, potentially with Piercy. Definitely. So, um, and he and he chose the Kiwis. He was yeah. sort of same situation with me. Um, he was younger when he moved over here, so he'd spent a lot of time. So, like yeah. you know, with him in particular, um, I don't think you know. Even though now I'm a mate, I wouldn't have been that um, you know opposed to him deciding to. Ch- to play for because uh, me and him are pretty similar we've both got Aussie accents because we've yeah. lived here for so long I was going to say like he seems like if you didn't know his history you'd be like oh that's an Aussie Ocker bloke yeah, yeah. yeah we've got um, yeah very similar in that way so um, yeah like I said um, it, I, th- I think it really depends for me even though you know you're taking the financial side of it yep. I think sort of if you start maybe high school yeah. over here and you start playing like or even a little bit later like representative footy if you come over and play Harold Matts and then you know yeah. you, you get brought through that New South Wales or Queensland system and you s- decide to choose and play for them, but some of the guys that come a little bit later or whatever. Or- yeah. Well, it's, I think like so the, the one guy's point was basically you should be able to play for Queensland but also choose New Zealand. Like, so, no, I don't think that. I, and I was – because it's like you know, it doesn't take anything away from the game, but I was like, yeah, but – I was like, imagine... You know, I didn't respond because I was, fucking, I was like, man, I don't have the time to answer this shit. But it did make me think like, because I, I can't relate to that because I was mm. born bred here. So it makes you really like reflect. Okay, maybe I'm thinking about this wrong. But I thought about it again. I was like, no, nah, no way. Let's say there was a, a Tongan culturally like ingrained in Tongan culture. And I moved to Tonga and I was there for two years. And I decided to play for one of the provinces or whatever. Yeah. I would never understand the depth of the meaning that these Tonga boys, the culture, what they've gone through, what they've achieved, what they haven't achieved, compared to, you know, I haven't, haven't I don't have parents that have put it into me. Do you know what I mean? Like, I've got no way to have that culture filled, filtered down to me. And so, yeah, I, I thought about it quite a bit and I was like, you know, yes, there are some people that may come over in high school and they do get that culture for, for quite a few years. But in most cases, like, you're just not going to get, it's not going to mean the same. Like, for, let's say I stayed at the Warriors for four years. I've got a. I do have a connection to New Zealand. Definitely more of a connection than what I would have, you know, if I had uh, hadn't have gone there. But for me to play for the Kiwis, it wouldn't have never meant it would the have same. Felt right. wouldn't, well, yeah. just wouldn't have felt. Oh, definitely wouldn't have felt right because I'm Aussie. Mm. But it, I, I would never feel the depth. Yeah. Because it means so much more than just a footy game and just like a, a an exchange of 
talent. It's, uh, you know, whoever wins. I, I feel like it, it, it just transcends that. Your family, the heritage, everything your country's gone through, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, it'd be, it's like you touched on Sonny in particular. Like, even watching, as, as much as I'd love to see the best players playing in that yeah. competition, like, if you'd watch Sam and Sam Burgess and Sonny Bill Williams chuck on that bizarre, origin, eh? it just wouldn't look right. Yeah. Like, and you touch on the Kiwi side of things, like, I get goosebumps and ch- proper chills when I, like, mm. watch the Hucker. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or, yeah. or even listen to the anthem. Mm. Um, you can't – I think it's important that you feel those things if you're mm. going to represent those sorts of teams. Oh, and, absolutely. And I grew up loving Origin, but I don't get goosebumps when I like when I watch Origin or they sing the national anthem or mm, that. So, yeah, like, so that's true. that was a big part of it. Like, yeah. I don't feel like, and I don't. I didn't really like. I grew up supporting New South Wales, but I didn't really care who won. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, See, I have a, I have a, like. Don't get me wrong. I love all the boys in New South Wales side, like you yeah. know, as people. But I have a deep hate for them when Origin comes. Like, fuck. Yeah. in my head, I'm like, fuck those guys. They fucking think they're better than us. Yeah. They've run this this cl- this game for so long. Yeah. Um, we're the fucking little brother all the time. Yeah. We've only got two, three. Like all of these things that are ingrained in your head that probably aren't true mm. but when you grow up you're taught this, yeah, yeah. this hate for the others that's okay. important though yeah, yeah. so Absolutely. if you're going to play in those sorts of games Absolutely. So. Um, yeah so I'm, I'm with you bro I, I think that the biggest thing though is how do we make it so money is not a factor in decision and how good would that be if we could go like for example you know Polynesian boys have the same opportunity to earn the same amount of money now, I understand we're in a capitalist society and whatever, you know, draws on both sides is going to make the money. I understand that. But how can we create a system where everyone that plays in the NRL has the same earning potentials? Because currently, everyone that plays in the NRL doesn't have the same earning potentials. Mm. So if you play for Australia and are brought up in Australia, yes, it is our national league, so that is a fair point. But it's still 46% or something like that are Polynesian boys or Indigenous. Yeah. Um, so I would love to see a day where we get to the point where everyone has the potential to earn the same amount of money. Yeah, I, it's it's important for the growth of the game. Mm. Being up being up north and you know seeing not necessarily how weak the competition is up there, but like you know we're not even thought about really. You know you got two or three t- games that are televised. Um, with regards to the, it's a hard one. Like if you're coming back in New Zealand rugby league, pay a certain amount compared to all the Tongan rugby league. Yeah, it's it's taken guys like. Tom Alolo and David Fafita, uh, Andrew Fafita yep. to, you know, take away, like they're taking a hit financially, massive, massive hit yeah. financially. Um, it's taken guys like this for this conversation to actually yep. get, get started, I think, which is a good thing. Yep. Um, I don't have the answers for it. Yeah. Um, we've got to find out, you know, maybe some, I don't know, could, could they discuss it in the CBA um, about potential earnings for playing for your islands or whatever but you know what does that do to the guys that are in the super league yep, like you know for true. the english i don't know there's um probably smarter people that should be addressing yeah, that than, than, <laughs> than us but Just pay I'd, I'd like to see yeah. i'd like to see yep. at the end of the day where um financially it doesn't come down to that decision and i don't with origin i don't think it's completely that i yep. think it's the spectacle of it as well that attracts yep. players yeah um, right. if you're a guy like caelan ponger you like that's the biggest. That's the biggest stage to be Absolutely. playing on, you know. Yes, like, go. yeah, he's a kid. You know, yeah. like him being a Kiwi boy and all that oh, sort of stuff. Yeah, okay. He yeah, wants yeah. to play at the yep. at the pinnacle and test himself against the best of the best. And at yep. the moment, that's what Probably it is. Like, yeah. as much as a pr- proud Kiwi as I am, um, you nowhere near the ratings or the attendance that we get for test matches is the same as Origin. Oh, so no, that no. obviously plays into it as well. So yeah. not the money side might not, not might not necessarily be the, the complete answer. That's true because like they could be earning fucking eight hundred k at club mm. and yes, an extra hundred k is fantastic, but yeah. it's not changing your life. No, any you know if you're earning eight hundred k or nine hundred k, you're probably going to end up in the same position at the end of your life, kind of thing. Yeah, um, with your decisions. Um, anyway, so yeah, so you grew up um, and so in the Western Sydney comp, did you say you kind of yeah played in the Penrith comp? Yeah, yeah, played in the Penrith comp. Um, I actually like. I was awful as a kid. Um, didn't make any rep teams. Oh, or really? Yeah, I was, I was. I was awful. <laughs> I was speaking to the boys about it the other day. I was actually. Uh, I used to come off, come off the bench and play wing when I was well, on yeah, this team. Just, just because, and that's very rare in, in juniors, especially you know, like the the Western Sydney cops pretty strong. So, yeah. um, to be carrying a a winger on the bench <laughs> on the bench, <laughs> on the no bench is uh, I, you know I know for a fact that I purely got, I got that because my old boy played NRL yep. um, and when he came back and they wanted sort of his yeah. influence involved in in the club um, and then I um, 
I was played school footy at Westfield Sports with a few of the boys that obviously kicked on. Yeah. And then uh, in my last year in the Opens, I got uh, recruited from uh, Artie Beetson at the Roosters. Oh, really? Yeah, he got me over to come play SG Ball at the Roosters. I started coming into my own then, started putting a little bit of weight. Like, I'm still, you know, skinny legs. I can't do anything about them. But yep, top half started to, to fill <laughs> yeah. out a little bit. And, yep. um, yeah, played, so played SG Ball in uh, 20s at the Roosters. Yep. And then... Um, so this would have been 2008-ish? Nine? 2000, 2004 Four, was okay. uh, I was 18 okay. 2005 6 at the Roosters and then um, yeah I was uh, I got carried away over there at the eastern suburbs oh really just got yeah. caught up in that yeah whole I, was, I was 19 20 um, got given a bit of cash like oh, started oh, started to feel myself a little bit yeah yeah um, we all go through it fuck we all go yeah, through it yeah and then I just got carried away and then you know obviously that route, those Roosters teams back in those days were grouse like that was yep. the last year of Freddie was 2004 and then there was still like you know, yes. Finchy still had that Crocker all there hasn't that, like, really been a time where they haven't had a good squad no. you know what I mean like I think they died off for a couple of years yeah, after that yeah. but then they they got Trent Robinson yep. and he brought him back <laughs> yeah but um yeah when I got to the when I got over there at Bondi and started hanging out with the boys it's like mate we're down at we're down at Ravisi's all the time and Beach Road Hotel and and, and the thing is like footy was people, secondary <laughs> the people that are listening are like how do you get how do you get carried away like you, you know what you're there for blah blah but people need to understand that because you're a young fella, you've got these you know, veterans, they can afford to do what they want to do mm. because they know the, how to keep their bodies in the right shape, everything like that. Whereas a young fella, he'll still be with them, but he doesn't know the tricks of the trade mm. no. to keep his head on and be like, don't get pulled into this or that. And so that's how you get caught up. You know, It's not the old boy's fault, but you're just this young guy just like, oh, yeah, sweet, we'll go here, we'll go there, all right, sweet. And you don't know what's going on. Before you know it, you're fucking doing stupid shit and you're like, oh, shit, like, you know, how do I get out of this kind of hole that I've dug? Mm. Um, so, at the root, so what was the kind of end result of that for you? Um, uh, so by the time I finished 20s, um, I didn't have a contract anywhere. Oh, wow. Um, I had to start fresh. I got uh, my, back to my dad again. He... Um, he was doing some development stuff at Parramatta. Yep. Um, he got me like a part-time full con- full-time contract. So I was training reserve grade with the Parramatta Eels, yep. but like training with the 20s. That's how it worked. Like where there was like four or five of us that would train with the 20s and then at the end of the week um, would train with the first graders who'd been dropped back to reserve grade. Yeah, okay. yep. So that's like that in-between period is like, it's pretty average when you're a part of that. Yeah. You, don't, you, don't feel that you don't feel that great about yourself. And yep. Um, had a pretty good year that year though, and um, then got a contract. Um, Michael Hagen re-signed me. Um, then he moved on, and then that's always not me. That's accept. tough when yeah. you're when you start like when you have a good season, and then like yep. then I had to prove myself under Daniel Anderson again. So then that took another year. Um, so it was 2008 by this stage. Yep, yep, 2008, um, and then 2009. I was like, you know, I played under. Uh, Played at Parramatta and then started training full time by this point in two thousand and in at the end of halfway through two thousand eight two thousand and nine, yep. and then I was just like, you know, when you start off, well, some of the guys you just start to realise that you're just a squad player. That's what it, that's how it felt. Like I was just going, I'm just here to do a pose against the, yeah, the first the grade team. Like we're getting would would be those ones where. If it was um, summer, would be in the big padded up, like got all, and then we'd do full contact <laughs> sessions. So then you'd be sweating up a storm, and then when winter come, they'd give it to them. So they had a little bit more warmth. It was like, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, just just little little up. things like that yeah, happen yeah. in footy. Yeah, yeah. And you're always on the other end of it. Yeah. So I'd been like two or three times now in in, in the lower grades of uh, Para, and I was just like, fuck, this isn't this is gonna be me. Yeah. So I just decided to go to like I was gonna go to France and play yeah. just the local league over there. Do you remember the first? Uh, or one of the first when was the first time you, you rock up to the first grade training and you, you know you're so new you're so excited to be there but then you realise wow this is this holy shit this is a standard these guys are maniacs like they're going hard do you know the thing this, I don't know if it was good or bad but um, like I never really felt that because my dad played NRL I was around rugby league players my whole life oh, so, you so I grew up like uh, spe- the, my earliest memories are you know running my dad I used to run out the run the first grade team out the tunnel for oh, the Warriors okay. back in the day they'd come yeah. out with the drums and all that pumping yeah I remember and, the drums I remember and the I used, drums. dad used to take me to train in school holidays all the time and I'd be hanging out with guys like um, um, Joey Wagner and that I don't know if they're, they're big names over here but Joey Wagner Greg Alexander was part of those Wagner, teams Wagner Steve Wagner Kearney good, yeah. Yeah, Steve yeah. Kearney, Steve Kearney. Yeah, yeah, yeah so um, I was always around first graders so I never really felt that um, that I think that feeling that some players get when yeah, they get a bit stuck, like, like oh, the aura shit. of being yeah. around players. I just thought it was normal. I thought that was normality. Yeah. And like I said, I don't know if that was a benefit or a, a hindrance to me because maybe I felt a bit too comfortable. Like yeah. I felt like 
there's just footy players like yeah, that. Yeah, nervous energy can sometimes help. Yeah, yeah, it makes you rip in a little bit harder yeah. or, you know, try to prove yourself. Yep. Um, but yeah, so, and then I decided I was going to go to Pia Donkeys over in there. I had a mate that um, from um, Queensland, a guy called Tommy McGugan. He'd gone over there um, and he and he said, look, I'll get you a gig over Tom there. Tommy McGugan. He played at Palm Beach Corumbum. He was a year older than me, but he played... Um, he, at Parramatta, he he played reserve grade in that as well. So, he, so, so he's from the Gold Coast. Yeah, from the Gold Coast. Yeah. And did he go to St. Michael's or something before that? Or not? not too sure. Tom not McGugan. too sure. I fucking know no, a dude named McGugan. Yeah, it rings a bell. Yeah. Anyway. Um. So yeah, he was going to take me to Pier Donkeys. Um, so what are they called Pier Donkeys? Pier Donkeys. That's their fucking name. They, uh, that's <laughs> that sort of sums up where I was, like where I was at. But <laughs> the donkey, mate. It's a like I end up playing at Catalans and we'll get yeah. to that but um, it's a good little spot it's oh, about, oh, yeah, yeah, it's, a, it's, yeah. It's, not, it's not the comp's not that great but it was, it's a good spot that to kinda live that kind of helps a bit like, so yeah, yeah, yeah. More, yeah 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 so um, and then as we're about to, to um, you know I, I went in to see my manager Gavin Orr and I said look mate I just I've got, got faxed a sheet here just need you to sign make sure I'm not getting fucked over or whatever yeah and then uh, I don't know if it was planned but then Daniel Anderson calls up um, while we're in, the, while I'm sitting with Gav, and I don't know if Gav, you know how managers yeah. work. Sometimes Gav yeah. might have gone, "Look, he's coming in, he's fucking off." Because I think they were trying to get me for a certain amount of money, and I was just like, "Nah, I'm sick yeah. of being a, um, a, a pad holder." A, yeah, pad holder. I'm yeah. over that. Yeah. Um, you would have been what 20, 22, 23? No, a little yeah, bit so older. You really yeah. get into that. Age yeah, I, I did pretty much three full years of reserve grade. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's and like even though you may look back now and be like man I could have been patient as I'm so young yeah. at the time you're starting to go no. what's yeah. happening yeah at that at that time you just start going look it's not going to happen for you yeah. like yeah, there are a lot of guys that sometimes you know especially with the new 20 system mm. they only do like one year of it and go oh fuck I'm, yeah, I'm not going to make it so the 20 system honestly I mean, we'll get, we can go down that path later, but I reckon it hurt the game so badly. 100% agree, yeah. Um, but yeah, anyway, sorry. Yeah, so then, uh, yeah, Ando calls me. He says, look, give it one more crack, come and do a preseason because he knew how I felt about it. Yep. Um, and then, yeah, then I made my debut that yep. year, 2010. Is that still going? Yeah, I just, every 20 minutes, I've just got to get them. Yeah, so 2010, um, yeah, made my de- debut in round three against the Tigers and then... Um, Yes, so a few things that have happened along the way, but yeah, three years at Parramatta, three years at Manly. Mm. So, so twenty three when you made a debut. Yeah, how's it? You know, being the son of an NRL player, that's I assume it's extra pressure of like, I should be an NRL player. Not I should be an NRL player, but do you know what I mean? It, it exists in your head that yeah. Dad did it. Yeah. So there's this outside noise of like you should do it as well, and it's taking time. Did you ever feel that as you were going through the grades, like you know? Because dad did it, I should, or, or you never really felt like that? Yeah, the, the part of the decision to go to the Roosters in particular, because I got that year, I must, like I went, I went okay in mm. school footy, yep. that I started to get noticed a little bit, and I had the opportunity to go to Parra and Penrith that yep. year. And I decided to go away and go to the Roosters to start fresh, because dad had no contacts there. Okay. So that played a part of my decision. I didn't want it to be, even though he's not a big name to most, yep. he, around footy circles, he's well known. Yep. He's, he, like, you know, he was coaching. Um, uh, development squads and you know, I think he even had a bit to do with the 20s at, at Parramatta well he did yeah he was the assistant coach at the 20s so I was like oh, I didn't sick. want to go to Parra and fucking yep. people just think I'm getting a run because of my dad mm. especially not playing rep footy before that yep. so I tried to you know do it myself um, eventually I've, I've had to come back to him and use him <laughs> yeah. um, but like I said I still had to work hard when I was there because like I was on a part time full, full time contract with the, the 20s and um, oh you know like the thing is you might get a crack because of people you know but yeah. you don't play fucking first grade because nah, you're yeah. fucking you, you're there to win this is a professional system this is not yeah. like oh mate can you just chuck me fucking sunny first grade like you got to work your ring out and you did work it's like four years or whatever yeah um, and with him in particular too like he's probably hard on you <laughs> yeah he, he was um, like he, he had his own little fractions like he, he couldn't he couldn't zip it sometimes as well he's that sort of coach so he, he, he wasn't always liked by people within the club as well like he had like even to this day he's had a few like yeah. little disagreements with coaches yeah. that he's been a part of yeah, and yeah. like systems and stuff that he wanted to do so yeah um, it's not exactly it wasn't always a positive yeah, for me yeah, mate, like being, say, yeah. maybe being a part of that club yeah. back in those days so so you get how's the call for the debut happen um, that was unreal that was grouse because I had zero time to think about it I'd been 18th man a few times um, the year before about two or three times and then was thereabouts for the squad to mm. start the year so yeah, I could feel it was coming yep. um, and you get a feeling in pre-season that 
you're not just holding the pads now, you're yeah. actually getting involved in the first team a fair bit. Yeah, like, oh, you just come in, we'll run yeah. you, someone's injured. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. sweet. Yeah, like if, if Toddy, I think it was Ben Smith and um, uh, Felitti Matteo and Todd Lowry. Felitti Matteo was so fucking good in his day, man. Yeah, People forget, Felitti's bro. grouse. Like, right. he's, he's up there with one of the you know, more talented players I've ever played with. Yeah. Um, yeah, so he's actually one of the, part of the reason I got the debut, actually. Um, I was 18th, 18th man, but everyone was sweet. Like, you know, you, you can get a feel for it if someone's got a niggling injury. So yeah. I, I had no inkling that I was going to play that mm. week. Um, little did I know that Mortsy had been struck down and was like, he, he hadn't told us. He was, he was uh, Daniel Mortimer was 5'8". Yep. Um, he hadn't told us that. To tell any of the boys that he was actually feeling crook, like he was feeling crook in the morning, but Ando and him kept that to himself. Yep. Um, then he, uh, the next morning at about two thirty, we were playing the Tigers on Friday night. I think I believe it was, and we're um, it's about two or three o'clock in the hour, and I'm having me. I normally just have a nap in the afternoons before games, and then yeah. so make sure I'm like, you know fully awake. Yeah. Um, I get awakened from a call from Daniel Anderson straight away. I go, "Fuck, I'm on here. Yeah, I'm gonna play. Like, yeah. why else would I be getting a call? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I pick up the phone. Um, yeah, he goes, "Look, Morty's Morty's crook. He's not gonna play. Um, we're gonna play Filetti at five eight, and we're gonna bring you. We're gonna bring you off the bench. So yeah. we need an extra forward. I'm just going." So that was as good as it gets because yeah. you don't have a lot of time to think about it. I genuinely didn't think I was going to play yeah, throughout the week. Yeah, so, good, good night's rest before. Yep, I didn't. I wasn't sleep. nervous all throughout the day. <laughs> yep. I went about my routine, but I wasn't like. And then I just rocked up and played. And then, uh, you know, I tell the story a fair bit. And this is um, a part of you know what sort of developed me. And the reason I want to touch on, I want to get in player management. Yeah, is I was looking across at Fletty the whole time and. I went to school f- with Filetti at Westfield yep. Sports and you know, Hainsey as well. Yeah. Um, so to have those guys in the team. So you're uh, part Chris of that Inu. crew that come through. That yeah, so, crazy. So yeah, so it was like um, in the school team, um, the guys that were in the team, actually in the team with me, Chris Inu, Filetti Mateo and, and Jared Hain. Yeah. We'd all play, gone to Westfield together. So we'd known each other for like 10 plus years. Yeah. And then I can remember just looking at Filetti and Filetti was just smiling and laughing and yeah, and he was so excited. Stoked, and, and, yeah. I'm, and I'm like fucking as nervous as all hell. <laughs> But uh, yeah, he kept me um, sort of kept it lighthearted for yeah. me if I felt like, and then yeah, played fifteen minutes was you know, blew out like everyone does, and yep. and then you so know, played you, a little bit better next week and a little bit better the week you after. Came, that. When you get a call to go on the field, what's well, you know, what are you feeling? Are you just like, <laughs> it's it's I don't know, it's I can't really remember it yeah. to be honest. Like that the how how that felt. All I remember is you know the first set first first set we um I made two or three tackles in a row and then we gave away a penalty on the fourth or fifth. Oh fuck! Yeah, and I was torture. And, yeah, legs were jelly. And you're going fine. out hard as because you're two yeah. or three tackles. I'm uh, <laughs> I get I ch- get on the kick chase, uh, make a tackle, chase hard from Mark, Mark a try- Lottie De- I think it was Lottie Dakiri. I'm trying to bring him down. He's big beast. I'm going throwing shit. everything yeah, into yeah, it. Yeah. And then like Robbie Farrow gets out. I think he drops someone. I try to chase chase Robbie and then I cut back and try to tackle again. Yeah. And then um, fucking someone give away a penalty and I've just gone, <laughs> as I'm running back in line, I've just gone, no, I don't think I can do this set. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm, yeah, I think everyone's pretty similar. Like they get out yeah. there and they try to do everything too quickly. Yeah, yeah. You get told to just take your time, but you don't. No. Nah. You go on skits. Yeah. Do you remember like the first contact going, oh shit, it's not too bad. Like, Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I, did, I made the first tackle and kick chase and I, I think the Lottie, Lottie Takiri tackle, because like I think, I believe he was the, Sec, my second tackle and I'm like obviously I was going as hard as I could but I'm yeah. like fuck this is Lottie Takiri you know yeah. what I mean like, he's, he's one of the best wings to ever play yeah and, and I'm like that wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be yeah, like but I said this is this that. is just like playing fucking reserve grade yeah. like, they're, ever, they're just, still just human so yeah um, and then I got on yeah like I said the, the chase to, to Robbie then Robbie Robbie Farrow dropped someone and I chased and then double deed that yep and I'm just thinking, in my head before the penalty, I'm going, fuck, this is great. I'm going, I'm going all right here. <laughs> First grade's easy. Yeah, this is all right. I, I can do this. I can do this ago. for a bit, yeah. Um, <clears throat> actually, our, uh, this is like the age-old debate in my opinion. It's become an age-old debate. Like I think before this year, maybe Ben Barber, but before this year, you would look at 2009 Jared Hayne and you would go, best form you've ever seen in your life, period. Um, you know, this year, my argument is, yes, individually, he is still the best form I've ever seen in my life. But I think as a package, when you like look at the match winner for Origin, match winner for... Um, I think Tedesco could be 
maybe just a, just ahead, but individually Haynes better. But what was it like seeing that, that form that he went through in 2000? I mean, you will, we will never see something like that again. Yeah, that was around... So, like I said, I was a part of those teams in a way, like mm. being an 18th man, got traveled <clears throat> traveled up the Gold Coast and a few like the the build up towards those games mm. in the back, like last eight to ten weeks, was like it was just a team coming first. Like yeah. everyone could feel the momentum. You know, did you know? Like, so Parra were completely out of the eight. Yeah, they had to win close. eight out of nine games to make the eight, mm. just to make the eight yep. or whatever. <clears throat> but we that the the games were fully packed, and we were like there were that. People were turning up thinking that they were watching like a potential grand finalist. That's how good that run was. And then, um, yeah, would would be in the sheds after the games. And Hainsey was just on a whole different, like even mentally, like his level. Mm. It's just hard to describe. Yeah, just um, yeah, he was just on a whole le- another level. Like he'd taken you know his little bit of Origin experience and yep. and rep experience and. Like, if you look back on it, and no disrespect to any of the boys that were part of that squad, that was a pretty average squad, like, yep. pretty average 17. So, you t- we talk about storm. Tedesco, yep. and so he's in, I believe he's in a better New South Wales team, yep. and I think he's in a way better club team. Yep. So, for what Hainsey did, like, Fui was unreal that year as well, yep. if, you, if, you, if you look back on that year. Obviously, Hindy was a part of it, yep. and he's a legend, and Kalis, and those were co-captains in yeah, a way but Inu was there still. yeah Inu was there like Flet, like a lot of these players had spurts of like you know good couple of years now. like I know those well I love those boys but like they were at their peak and sort of yeah, just coming through at those stages yep. too and yep. but Hainsey was on a whole different level to everyone yeah. and he made all of them like way better and they'll tell you that as well yeah I think I think it's the key positions that is the real important in that argument in the sense of like you know and this is no disrespect to Morty he was He's fucking played more first grade games than me. I'm pretty sure he did. Like no, just but you compare that to say Luke Keery or Cooper Cronk. Yeah, it's like well, fuck, like yeah, you know. And and then the number nine, you got Friend and, and Verrills and that. Yeah, we had, there was Matt Keating, <coughs> Matt Keating for Power and Jeff Robson. So from, like, Je- you can, like you know, I love all those boys. They're all good mates of mine. Um, but they're just solid first graders. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Whereas you look at Keery and, and Cronk in particular, like yeah, I, Cronk, um, Cronk could potentially be one of the greatest ever halves. Like, honestly, you look at his resume; it's yeah. fucking crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah, as I said, I think like you look at the individual side of it, Hain will never be replicated, uh, yeah. even Barber to an extent in 2012. But the only reason why I say like, you know, what is the point of footy? It's to win a grand final. It's And like the match winner in origin, holy yeah. shit, and then the match winner. I just think that like when you, I mean, it's a, it's a apples and oranges like in the yeah. sense of like, are you looking for the achievements of like the grand final or are you looking for like the craziest shit you've ever seen in your life on a footy field? And yeah, it's... um. It's, I mean, I love it. I love talking about it because it's so just to relive that that captured moment of Hayne just going absolutely nuts. Like, yeah, those highlights just will just be around forever. Oh, they they always and you, this is the thing with Hainsey. When if you're talking about you're going to talk about T- Tedesco's year, you're always going to compare it to Hainsey's. Yeah, that's, that's how true. good it was. That's People true. always go back when Benny Barber was doing in 2012. They're going, is it is it, is as, it as good as Hainsey's? Haines. Yeah, that's very like, true. So I think that that matters as well that people actually revert it back to Hainsey's Haines. ten week period. That's a good point. That's a good point. And I, th- I think that the, what what is when I when I talk about like individual performances, what was so incredible about Hain is like. He wasn't just like a good ball runner. He was fucking mad cutout passes. He was chip chasing. He was strong as shit. He was fast. His footwork. So he had like literally everything. He was a full package of an NRL player. Yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah, I just, um, that that whole year was crazy. I, I just, fuck, man. It, it, you, if you watch those highlights, it's like it's not happening. You watch, you go, mm. how's this? This is NRL. These guys are good fucking defenders. Yeah. Yeah, he made it. Yeah, that's a that's a good point. He yeah, made right. everyone look like they were reserve graders mate, during that period. He that made, Dragons team was fucking unreal, and he made it look easy. <laughs> and he carved them, mate. Like, carved like yeah. sometimes, like oh yeah, he carved up, and it's like well, okay, he broke one tackle and like, and he made a line break. Like that's mad. That's really mm. hard to do. It's not mm. easy. Yeah, Hayne was literally stepping three or four blokes and then running eighty meters. Yeah. Like fuck, man, it's crazy. Um, anyway, so yes, you make your debut, and then did you stay in the side the rest of the year? Or yep, yep. played every game all the way through. Played all the games. Um, then and because uh, we because they made the grand final the year before, and then we didn't make it. I think we finished tenth or whatever. And yep. Daniel Anderson got sacked. Yeah, um, that's when Steve Kearney come in Actually, from Melbourne. Was, so was Riddell still at the club then? No, nah. Piggy Riddell. Okay, no. Nah. When so, did Piggy Piggy miss the grand final? Because 
Piggy and Finchie left the year before because they were big parts of the club when I was like reserve grade. Okay, yep, yep. Um, and then I think when Daniel An- when Hague's finished up and Daniel Anderson come in, yep. he got rid of a few of the older boys that oh, okay. like had a big influence on the on the team. Like nice. those boys were like really strong leaders and mm. um, their voices mattered. And, yep. Yeah, that was a transition period. That's the reason why like um, Mortsy in that debut that year because um, – <laughs> Morty will laugh at this. Morty was sort of like a, a Bradbury in a in a way because <laughs> a few people had moved on, um, like Finchie and that, and then he just fell into that spot yeah. and then took advantage of it. He like, went really well. He for was a fucking killed it. Yeah, I think he was even right. up for maybe Rookie of the Year. Um, so yeah, but Morty Morty was the beneficiary of uh, Ando coming in, wanted to get rid of a lot of senior yep. players, and then Do put his good. stamp on the team. Yep. And, and so then, yeah, uh, that next year. Did, so that next year, you played the rest of the year, and then yeah. Then- so so then yeah, Kearney come in, and then he tried to bring in the um, the Melbourne system with us. He yep. brought him and Brad Arthur come over. Um, obviously, they beat the boys in two thousand and nine. He'd been a part of the system for a while, so yeah, he was fully Mel- when he come to when he come to us. We were watching clips of Melbourne all the time. Oh really? Um, That's weird. And it was weird, like when you look back on it now, and then being a you know, bit older. At the time, I was like. I was a young kid, so I was ta- taking everything. Everything yeah, was yeah. like, all right, this is how we're going to improve. This is how Melbourne do it. Yeah. But when, when I was sort of looked back on it, like we were completely different styles of team. Yeah. Like that, the t- Parramatta team was based on getting to a few spots in the field, um, offloading the football. We were pretty good at that. We had Fui and, you know, even Hindy had a nice little offload in him. Um, <laughs> me, me, like I tried to offload the ball a fair bit when yep. I was younger. Fletty did it better than right. anyone probably in the league ever. Mate, he like, was a joke. Yeah, probably him and, um, was it Leo Titi? Like that was, he was the grouse They it. were torture because you, you just couldn't fucking tackle them and you constantly had to stay up and uh, torture. Yeah, torture. Yeah. Um, yeah, so then we brought in like uh, Mooks tried to bring in the uh, the Melbourne system and uh, it just didn't work. We just didn't have the we didn't have the troops for that for I that just, sort of system. It was a grind, like get to get to direct points of the field, um, you know, setting up for plays, kick to the corners, def- defend up. But like, so he worked on our conditioning straight away. He come and like flogged us, uh, did army camps and yep. like fucking these these. 3k runs into uh, hill sprints into 3k runs and oh then, like that was a culture shock to everyone yep. involved i think i say this all the time i think hainsey set the record for para park no one beat it um yeah, he did it in about 25 to 30 minutes where everyone else did it in 15 i don't think you can you can't oh, set the record. <laughs> yeah the other way <laughs> no, like, <laughs> no. Look, i mean yeah. uh, he's one of the best ever play the game but i'm pretty sure awful he's a trainer, trainer. Yeah. awful trainer so <laughs> i was like bro where'd this training come yeah, from yeah oh i love bringing this up so you, i don't think you can like there are old women that walk para park quicker than what hainsey did it um so but then that's that was the sort of system that um, he would be the perfect footy player if he was a hectic trainer yeah he would that, literally be the perfect footy player yeah well, we spoke about it the other day but like when it come to origin and he He'd just fucking, fucking kill it he's the best player in the field right, like, and like engine wise mate goes all day yeah, all day like you know even even like not even the big plays carries out a yardage when he I remember some of the games where he, he's come from underneath his post set line against and he just runs straight through the middle of him and makes takes a 50 minute mate, break because everyone's gassed I just it's mate, I couldn't comprehend like yeah. and a lot of coaches have fucking lost hair and gone grey because of pains he's like trying yeah. to figure out like alright because because not necessarily he was the best trainer, yep. they're worried about that rubbing off on the team. But a lot of us guys who've known him for years are just they like, just, get it. just fucking leave Hainsey alone. Yeah. Don't you don't he doesn't have to be to the standards of other yeah. um, players. Just he's going to turn up on game day. That's and all we know. Yeah. Especially if it's f- like Channel Nine game or something. <laughs> yeah, he's killing. like there was a, honestly there was a difference between a Channel Nine game and a Fox game back in those days for him. <laughs> Imagine like, being that good, like that you can just go. Yeah, he's great. It was great. Oh, so if it was Friday night, the lights were on. Yeah, you just go. You don't have to worry about Hainsey. He's going to be yeah, sweet. Be but sweet. if it was a Saturday afternoon game, maybe Bro, do you on his Fox and, <laughs> with a kick. Yeah, yeah. Was that the kick down the sideline and when it, Hodges? Yeah. Bro, that's his debut. Yeah. And it was a hectic try yeah. on half time. Oh, my God. Um, anyway, yeah. So, so well, yeah. So, yeah. Steve, Steve Coney comes in. Um, yeah, obviously, those years didn't go too well for him and, you know, yeah. myself as well. Just, so, just on the Melbourne Storm thing, that's really like, I understand bringing a system in that works. But even the fact you called the Melbourne Storm system, you were watching Melbourne Storm things. Yeah, we're watching all video. We didn't watch any video of ourselves. We were watching all Melbourne video. So, it's basically the, the problem with that, in my opinion, is not the system, it's a subconscious thing of we are. Like, you should be putting in, we're the fucking eels and fuck those cunts. Yeah, like, yeah. we're going to fucking beat them 
as the eels. Yeah. And I feel like you're subtly putting in your head like, when actually, that's our big brother. Like, yeah. do you know what I mean? Like, they're the big dogs. And I understand you've got to... But I don't know. I just, I've never been in a club where that's the case. Yeah. As I've got older and I've appreciated more... Like, I watch a lot of sports and I listen mm. to a few, like a lot of good coaches over the years. And what I've realized is, yeah, you can implement some structures and um, sort of, you know, uh, what's the word? Some fundamentals in your game or whatever. Yep. But the best coaches I find do, can adjust to their roster. Yeah. Like you can't, you know, like I'm, I'm doing stuff on NFL and, and NBA. Like yep. you can't design it. You can't uh, design a game plan around Tom Brady the same you would Lamar Jackson. Absolutely. Like, you know what I mean? Like yep. Baltimore Ravens completely changed their system to move on from Joe Flacco to go to Lamar Jackson. They started yep. drafting for that. Yeah. And then they changed the way that they played the NFL. Mm. And it's the same as the NRL. Like, like I said, grinding, kicking the corners, playing like around the ruck. Like, like I said, Matt Keating's one of my good mates. Went to Westfield as well, but he yep. wasn't. He wasn't Cameron Smith. Yep. We didn't have Cameron Smith. We didn't have. Like, we compare the two actually fullbacks. We've got Hainsy and Billy Slater. Yeah, oh, totally like, different. You know what I mean? Hainsy's yeah. going to step in when he thinks it's a step, like come in and you know get a big play. Yep. Whereas Billy was just everywhere all the constantly. time, all like constantly. Cardio is one of his most underrated assets. Yeah, Billy Slater, and he was just always at yeah. So. It's even just to compare them two together, like we had to play a different style of footy yeah. because you don't have the continuous stress of of Billy Slater around the ruck and popping up and you know moving all over the field. As to we just had to get make sure we got eventually got down there in a good spot to put Haynes in a position to capitalise for us. Um, and you even look at Storm now; they've actually had to slightly change their game over the last two years because Munster is not Cooper Cronk. Yeah, um, and Cameron Smith is not as you know he's still fucking unbelievable, like killing it. But what I mean is physically, he's not he's not doing the same amount of stuff he could do two years ago. Yeah. Like when it comes to exerting himself. Um, so yeah, I, I totally agree with you, man. Like it's you, you have to you can take uh, mentalities from other teams yeah. about you know grinding or whatever. But yeah, that's um, that's strange. Okay, so yeah, that that year he comes in, and how did you go personally though? Were you did you go all right or um, it was it was up and down. I was. Um... I got like got got to be fitter that year too, and um, I changed my style though to to suit like like I said I didn't mind offloading the ball, playing with a bit of footy. Yep. That's sort of what got me to first grade, and and Ando actually promoted that. Yep. He didn't mind his back rolls. He had Folletti, um, Todd Larry, even Todd Larry. I remember him. He played a little bit of footy yep. as well when we could play in the short sides or whatever, where we were pretty much um, just run your good lines, get mm. to you know get to the spots or whatever. So I thought it took away a bit bit from what I was. Good at, and then, um, yeah, so I played all 2011, but then straight away I knew I wasn't getting a good feeling in 2012, and I got dropped after round one. Yep. Then only played like five or six games that year. Mm. So um, then again, you sort of come to a bit of a crossroads in your career. Um, you I was about 26 this day, 25? Yeah, about yeah, 20, yeah, 25, 26. Yes. Maybe, yeah, around 26. And then... Um, yeah, had no contract after that year because oh, no one wanted to touch me. I didn't play. I didn't play any for hardly any first grade. When I did, I was played pretty rank because yep. I was felt like I was chasing the game all the time. I actually, he's the, the reason um, I ended up getting a second chance was um, Steve Kearney got fired. I think he got released or you know moved on at about round uh, 15, 16. Yep. Um, and then Brad Arthur come in and he was the assistant coach and he took over his interim. This, yep. And then he he told he pretty much gave me a new lease of life. He said, "Look, you've fucking been injured all this year. You've been dropped. He goes, just go back, just work on your footy, just try to get back to what you do best, sort of thing." Yep. And he goes, "If you rip in, I'll give you an opportunity. I'm not going to hand you something, but you know, yeah. like, but we were facing the wooden spoon that year, so not every, even got first graders weren't playing well. He yep. goes, "If you rip in or whatever," and he so he gave me that opportunity. Um, come and watch me a few games. Brought me back into the team at the end of the year. And then I finished the season, so I ended up playing the last five games. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, I didn't have a contract anywhere, but Brad went to Manly that year. Um, they brought him over to be assistant coach with twos, and then he put in a good word for me. He said, like, you know, if you this guy might not necessarily start for us, but yep. um, he'll work hard and all those sorts of things, like like I sort of did to get myself back into the team. Um, yeah, he put in a good word for me, and then 13 was just a, like a really good year for me. I was lucky. I, I got over there. <laughs> And when I started my preseason, um, realistically, Tony Williams had just moved on. He'd followed Des to the Bulldogs. Yep. So there was a left edge spot that was available. It probably would have been Jimmy Bureau's because Jimmy Bureau 
been playing there for like two or three years and you know played in the grand final and whatnot um he was supposed to take over that probably that left edge spot that's what they would have envisioned and then i what happened was glenn stewart got injured and done his knee the year before mm. so jimmy did all the work on the right edge with cherry that, that was yep. his, that was his good mate and then i yep. come on the left edge and then i had a pretty good preseason. and then you know that was sort of the start of my manly career yep. um we went to the grand final that year and lost to the chooks and all that sort of stuff so yep that's 2013 that's 13 yeah and so like would you say that's your most enjoyable year of footy yeah definitely yep and what do you what what do you think was the you know reason um, for that other than just getting mate, I was just there was nothing manufactured about that team like you know we talk about Parramatta and trying to become Melbourne or whatever Manly yeah. were Manly yeah and Manly were known as Manly around the league like, even before I'd got there the reputation was so strong yeah they had so many senior players like I said this before but like, the senior boys pretty much you know run the team mm. in in the most um, positive way ever yeah. Um, Twos, I, I feel like Twos was just like a man manager in a way, and that's yeah. I've, I've heard that's what Wayne Bennett's been really good at over yeah. the years is just having the right people in the team, yeah. you know, the right senior players, giving them a lot of accountability yeah. of how the team's going to go, and obviously you know being a lot of them being rep players like you know Jamie Lyon was our captain, and obviously you know the names like yeah. Brett Stewart, Glenn Stewart, so Anthony good. Watmo, like. Fuck, you look at that team. You keep going. You can keep going. Steve yep. Maddai, like I played on the left edge. And then you've got Kieran Foran and Daly Chair Evans coming through. Yep. Like they're the young halves. Of the, to four on the wing. Georgie's all, Georgie was on our wing. Killing blokes. Brent Kite. Like all these Brent guys. Kite. So, Fuck, Brent Kite. mate, we didn't, I didn't, as much as I respected the coaching staff and all that, like my biggest thing at that club was not letting the senior boys down. Yeah. I just wanted to, they, they run they run the team on and off the field, so yeah. we had some, we had some fucking really good times on the field as well <laughs> that year, and uh, that was a bit of a relief too because it become very um, it become really much like a, like a job at Parramatta yeah. and everything like we, you know, um, got to do hydration tests in the morning, you know, with all the supplements and weighing in and fucking all, like it be- you become like a robot sort of in a way, yeah, and that was sort of the Melbourne store system and that worked for them, but at Manly it was way, way more laid back, like, yeah. It's funny how different things work, eh, man? Yeah. You'd like, look at you'd look at the structured side and be like, of course that's the way to go. Yeah. And then you got manly that are more there's this like strength in the bond you have yeah. that seem to have worked. Yeah, and we I think we they thrived off being um old school players as well. Mm. Like I think that in particular, like those guys, even the years before me, like there's not really teams like that anymore. Mm. Like we were a team that played footy. Yeah. From any part of the field. We could attack from any part of the field with the mm. players that we had. And it wasn't. We didn't want to like those. Old, those boys didn't want to be considered like athletes, which yep. a lot of rugby league players are now. We're yep. actually footy players. Like yep. every, everyone knew how to play with the ball. Um, you know, ask a lot of questions from any part of the field. Um, and then you know, like we had we had beers waiting for us in the sheds after the game still, and then like that. burgers and pizzas and that. Like that. a lot of teams don't have that now. They like every, that, yeah. it's like fucking yeah. a little uh, a protein shake and. Fucking yeah. these these packs are like rice and and uh, chicken dishes or whatever. And it's like shit, gross, soggy rolls, like like fucking yeah. wraps and that. We'd, like, we'd get we'd disgusting. get fresh burgers from across the road or fucking no. pizzas, and we're sitting there we'd smash like, you know, if you if you didn't have to drive, you could you could smash half a dozen beers in the sheds before you you know went home and days, or man. Oh, couple. Yeah. It's so that, there was, that was nothing grouse. worse than walking off a field and you got these disgusting soggy wraps no, to eat. Right. You don't eat them. No, no one eats them, no. and they just sit there. Yeah. And it's like well, fuck like. Let me just enjoy this. Like, I fucking just worked me ring out. I just want a nice burger. Like, yeah, have a burger and a beer. Fucking yeah. nothing better. Um, all right. So, yeah, 2000. Like, t- walk us through basically the grand final then. Like, you know, fucking grand final. Bro. Yeah. So, um, those boys have been, obviously, like I said, those boys have been around it in 11. They win in 11 or 12. I think it was 11. 11. Yeah. They won yeah. it in 11. They won it in 08. Yeah. Some of them as well. Um, so, it was, it was like, um, Felt, it felt like it was normal for everyone mm. at Manly. It was just like, yeah, this is what we do here. Like, you yeah. know, I, I come from a team that fucking won the spoon and that. <laughs> when I got there, it was just like, you know what? This is just how we do it. This is how it is around here. Yep. Um, one thing that always stuck with me, and it was, it was true, is the week of the grand final, or with Glenn Stewart just goes, um, take a minute to, to soak it all in. Really enjoy, like, the build-up of it all. Um, he goes, it goes so quick. Even the grand final, yeah, you actually there are so many things that you forget about, and that was a hundred percent true. Like when I think about the game, 
I haven't been able to watch it fully yet. Like mm. I've I've got up the thing. I've got up to the first half, and then I've had to turn it off because yeah. I knew I know what's you know what's coming at the end of the yeah. movie. You know what I mean? Um, so just makes you feel all those feelings again. You fucking feel. Yeah, sick. I think I get to the point where we get the penalty try. There's a penalty try right before half time, and we take the lead. And I'm like, yeah, that'll do. Yeah. I'll, f- oh, <laughs> I'll stop watching now. Yeah, fucking hope, fucking um, hope. But yeah, I, I don't really remember like parts of the game, which is weird. Like that's what Glenn said as well. Um, but yeah, it was a, it was because I had that feeling. Um, I, I don't know if it was like immaturity or like just not even not like being aware of the situation. Mm. Because it was so normal to everyone, I was like, "Fuck, we're just going to be back again." Doesn't matter, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, I, I, I didn't even when we lost, I was like yeah. happy to be there, and yeah. then I was just like, "You know what? Fuck it, we're going to be back in another like grand yeah. final again anyway." So it's all good. Like our, all our roster was still together that next year. Um, in f- yeah, in fourteen, we're yeah. all still together. So yeah, you, um, we're like that oh, roster too. It's crazy, right? Yeah, yeah. And then, but fucking in fourteen, we end up having heaps and injuries at the end of the year. We lost. Um, we had, I think we had Jason King out for a fair chunk of that year, but we lost Glenn Stewart um, back in the season. Matty Ballon, yep. Anthony Watmo, Matty Jimmy Bura. So underrated, bro. Matty Ballon and Jimmy Bura, mate. Like yeah. Jimmy's versatility, and he's a good mate of mine, but. Um, he's a very underrated manly player through those years. I, yeah. Not within the playing group. Everyone would like, you know, really yeah. respected Jimmy within the playing group. But Jimmy was it like, he was a victim of his own versatility in a way because yeah. he probably could have played back row or lock or whatever mm. like that. Yep. But like, he came off the bench. So we lost, yeah. So Glenn Stewart, Anthony Watmo, Matty Ballon and Jimmy Bura. Yep. That's pretty much four out of your starting pack. Like I consider Jimmy, even though he came off the bench, he was like a starter for us because he was so important because he could fill so many positions. Mm. Um, yeah, we lost all those boys at the end of the year and we just ran out of troops and then um, South tailed us up and then we had a golden point game against the Dogs and Hockey kicked the field goal and knocked us out. So we, 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 I think we finished first or second that year still because we were rolling throughout the year. Yeah, okay, and, the and then year once we lost everyone time. with about four or five weeks to go. Yeah. Um, and then there's also other things that come into that like players were moving on that year as well. We were losing Kaidi, we were losing Glenn Stewart the next year. There's a little bit of disruption within the camp. Yeah. Um, so then, you know, all these things were factoring in a fucking yep. awful end of the season. Yeah. And then that was the year, obviously, the Rabbitohs won it. But I'd like to think if we were given another... Because we beat... The year before, we beat the Rabbitohs to go into the grand final against uh, Roosters pretty convincingly in the end. Yeah. Um, we liked our chances against Rabbitohs most of the times when we played yep. them. Um, I'd like to think, you know, if we, if we had our you know, full deck of cards, we might have given them a good run. But that's... Yeah, it's fucking footy. That's eh? that's just my opinion. I they'll probably think think differently. differently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's I mean it's true, you know, we like for example, we <coughs> in two thousand eight we got knocked you know, we, we had the game in the bag against the storm. Yeah. And then someone knocked the ball coming down out of trouble and they they score on essentially the buzzer and, and knock us out in two thousand eight. And Manly went on to towel Storm up forty whatever because they lost Cameron Smith, didn't they? Uh, I'm I'm not sure if they lost Cameron Smith, but we I'm of the same opinion. Like outside was so fucking good that year yeah. that if we hadn't have made that one error because we dominated Storm that game, yeah, they shouldn't. Have, we should have been way ahead of them. I, I really. You did. always did good against the Storm too, didn't you? In those years, uh, in those years, yeah, yeah. we beat them in when when Storm were grouse, yeah. like. And they had the, the way of the cap. Um, <laughs> it hurts, bro. Yeah. It, it just hurts because you're like, fuck, man. Like, we, we, we would have been through the grand final. You, anyway, don't, you don't have to talk to the Power yeah, Boys yeah, about yeah. that. That'll, uh, That's actually something else I was going to say about Hayne. Yeah, Imagine yeah. his legacy, in my opinion, completely different, eh? cemented if they win that grand final. Yeah. That would, he would have gone, that would have gone in history to everyone, doesn't matter who you are, as the greatest year of all time from a player. 100%. 100% but just because of a sal- over the salary cap by eight, not just a bit, heaps. Yeah. Um, like imagine if uh, like Greg In- just just Greg Inglis wasn't a part of that team. It's, it's Dude, what, like it's completely different, bro. Greg, like that's what does just take one player out of that team. One player out of that team, yeah. and and, and I that's the thing. Give him a good, give him a good crack. Absolutely, I reckon they. Well, they lost by seven points or something. Mm. Like you telling me they couldn't. Like you don't. You telling me that Greg Inglis isn't worth one try mm. in that time of his career 100%, as well. Yeah, he was on. So it frustrates he me was like, probably the only counterpoint to you know the talent that Hainsey had for Queensland at that time. Oh, like, absolutely. G, like absolutely, GI was playing in Queensland in those gun teams and he's like his own different animal like beast yeah. but like yeah they were the he was going like you tip, know, for tat. T- tip for tat with Hainsey yep. for years them too yep. but Hainsey does something crazy then Greg was yeah. fucking fence three cunts and yeah 100% like, you yeah, know, yeah. And so, that's what it was yeah and people forget like Inglis was so good that 
Queensland, I don't care what anyone says, Queensland do not go on their run without Inglis. The amount mm. of times he broke that game apart yeah. from a hectic run yeah. um, is just, you know, you can't count them. But anyway, so, well, I feel the same. 2008, I really feel we could have given Manly a really good shape. We had like the craziest Lockyer, fucking Ennis, Hannett, uh, Petro, yeah. Hodges, Hunt, yeah. Boyd. Like our team was fucking stacked. But anyway, so I know, I know how you feel, bro. I know how you feel. Um, so, so 2014... Happens 2015 was the did you re-sign 2014 or did you no so re-signed after 13 because I just had a part time yep. uh, not a part time full time contract but I was a uh, squad a very weak contract yeah to start that year and then uh, that after 13 we had a good year and then I re-signed for two years yeah um, but then <clears throat> you know sort of didn't go to plan like I said after that yep. um, Glenn Stewart had to move on Brent Quite had to move on through you know you know 10 years of dominance from that team like mm. we were actually there was some Salary cap casualties that you know, obviously the club would have loved to have kept. Yep. Um, and it just Jason King, who I respect immensely, he retired mm. and didn't play fifteen. Mm. We lost so many. Anthony Watmo went to Parramatta. Like oh, you know really? what I mean? Yeah, that's, that's, that's bro. Like that's, that's pretty, pretty much. F- they're, they're all the leaders of our pack. Oh, like, so, apart like, from me, that's the the entire pack. Like we were the entire starting pack. I was going to say like that that's point. the core of your team. Yeah. Like you, with it, you lose that, and you're losing fucking the heart of your team yeah. pretty much. Oh, so. Man. That was a tough year to start the year. It took us a while to get going. Yep. We we ended up finding finding our way halfway through the year, but it was too late. We yep. we made a run, and then uh, I think we won seven out of our last nine. We tried to do a bit of a Parramatta run, and we fell, you know, a game or short game or two short of the top eight. Um, oh, I don't think we would have done any damage that year anyway. And then Trent Barrett come on. Yep. And, and when Trent come, he was they'd moving on from twos. They're sort of starting a new same thing. New coach comes in. They start clean out. Bit of a clean out in a way. Um, start looking at different troops, and then um, so I just I went over to the UK. I went over to France and played the Catalan Dragons. So you go to France. What what was that? Exp- what, how could you sum? How would you sum up that experience? France? That was probably um, the best experience of my life, and I couldn't re- I couldn't recommend it oh, enough really? to, to other rugby league players. If you're like sort of fifty fifty on going over there it's it was the lifestyle. It's less about the footy. It was to be honest, it was less about the footy mm. and more about the travel and experience the world life experience and living in a different yeah. country like yeah. you know growing up in western sea i didn't really do too much traveling like while i was over you know what footy's like that's what we, I we've only got we've only got a six week window where we can travel and, you got to and that's in october yeah and and like you know you can't go to places like and then fully enjoy europe or yeah. the states because it's getting you know a little bit cold even like we went to vegas one year and started raining while we we're there yeah um so the the experience I had over there was unreal. Um, learn a little bit of French by the end to to get by. Yep. Um, talking about partying, fuck, we did some partying that year. We had a uh, the crew was fucking Were you single. Unreal. Yeah, very single. Yeah, very single. Yeah, I've, yeah. Hell. So just re- just recently become single. Oh, so you were at the peak yeah. of just aggression to get yeah. out there. I was keen. I was keen as mustard to <laughs> you do me best work. Yeah. Um, yeah. So and we had that year was like. Um, yeah, Toddy Carney was over there. <laughs> Willie Mason, Dave oh, Dave Taylor. <laughs> it's like the dream team. Yeah. Willie um, Mason, Toddy Carney. Yeah. Fucking, Mason was with his partner Claire. She was over there, but it, and and Glenn Stewart was with his partner and his family. But like but we still we, have the boys we had there. the best. Yeah. We had a good gang oh, where okay, we no. we got into some we got into some trouble and that and um. But yeah, it was like I said, life experience wise, yep. unreal, mate. Like beautiful yep. part part of the world to live in. Uh, I really love the culture. I love the people. Yep. Um. Learning the language and learning, like you know, throw my, I threw myself really into it in the second year and try to get to know as many people as I can and yep. build up so many good relationships. Um, so I love that part of it. Yep. Um, yes, yeah, so I can't. I can't recommend enough. And then just then I went to Wakey for a couple of years after that just to keep the dream alive. Really, that was just. A, just, just I didn't want to retire. Yeah. Paying, still getting paid relatively good money. So yeah, yeah. Um, Wakey was a bit different. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, the it's, lifestyle's completely different. <laughs> it's, the lifestyle's different over at Wakey. I, Wakey's probably the best crew of boys that I've my, that really? I had. That I had so, the, the best part of the gang and uh, Ice played at Wakey as well. Oh, we, really? speak, we speak about this. Is, is that what you meant? At, at, no, at, no, no. I'd, I'd known Ice for years from the Parramatta days. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so when you go to a team like Wakefield in a, in a situation like that, there's um, zero egos at that team because you're all pretty much just locker room guys. Yeah, like, okay, you're yeah. all a bunch of guys that are just looking for that last <laughs> little run. <laughs> so when you get there, 
everyone's the same. Yeah, like yeah. you're all the same. No one's better than anyone. Like yeah. you got fucking just a lot of guys that are just journeymen that have fucking <laughs> had to just you fucking fight for a contract their whole lives. And what that does is you get fuck. Everyone's the same. Everyone gets along so yeah, well. Like, we had so like so. and there's an understanding. Yeah. Boys will fucking rip in, but you know what? Yeah, yeah. And we fucking went good. Like we went yeah. good for the like for the 18 months I was there. Yeah. Um, we were the so in terms of the cap. Yep. We were that far under the cap. We were, what in terms of what the club spent? Yeah, we didn't spend fuck all, but we still just missed the top four. It's a top four system over there. Yeah, okay. And then it just changed to a top five, but they just missed. They'd run fifth like two or three years in a row because they built a team on the back of that sort of culture. You yeah, know what I mean? And yeah. it worked. Kind of like the old manly culture of like just yeah. loving footy. And yeah, exactly. Yourself. Backs against the wall. Like yeah. no one fucking thinks anything of us. Like fuck yeah. them, sort of thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, and like I said, we used to just go to the same old local pub and fucking yeah, smash yeah. half a dozen pints and that after a game and have a few pizzas. So Mate. it reminded me so much of Manly in yeah. a way. Yeah, it's, it's funny. Like, it's so cliche, but it truly is that's what footy is about. Yeah. Like, it, you know, you get caught up in this professional... And don't get me wrong, it, it needs to be. Like, yep. it's a professional sport. Yeah. But also, the reason why you played the game was to play footy, but then when you got off the field, fucking just enjoy the boys. Yeah. And it seems that's like that's the, what you did. Yeah, 100%. And those are the parts of... That people always seem to miss when they finish up playing footy. Fucking hell. Fucking hell. But yeah, those gangs, I'm still in contact. Like, when I look back on it now, like, I've got good mates at every every team that I play, the four teams that I played at, but I'm close with about, you know, half a dozen at Manly and half a dozen at, really? at, at the Wakey and, yeah, you know, group chats and all those sorts of things. So, um, um, yeah, so I, both experiences were completely different. Yep. But I took so much out of both of them. Yeah, you absolutely. know, friendships and, and mateship at, at Wakey and then. Um, just lifestyle and you know being able to travel and, and culture and all that from France was mad. I think um, the travel is a real um, and I that's the one thing I tell people they're like you know like oh you know so great with your career and I say don't get me wrong I'm fucking the luckiest bloke in the world. One thing I regret about footy is I never got those years from 18 to 25 or wherever just to go fucking experience the world. Yeah, and I feel like going to France for you you know obviously you know what it was for you but my assumption would be it really opens your eyes to like there is so much more like than fucking australian footy like yeah that's exactly it so yeah. what a, i could have stayed in yeah. the nrl I had, I had a couple of contracts at a couple of teams yeah um but very um you know again mediocre money it wasn't you know i got more to go over the france but that wasn't the reason the reason was to experience the cultures yeah and it's exactly right when you get over there you realize and it's 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 a learning experience and it's uh, sort of shaped me to who I am today as well, which is like we, we just play a game of footy. Yeah. I think sometimes we're over here in the bubble, yep. especially in Sydney and Queensland where you, have, you think like all my mates and I'll, you know, we've grown up in Western Sydney, footy's their life. And I, and I, and I can appreciate that or whatever, but you go over and, you know, I got to travel to all these different countries. Yep. Um, the funny thing about rugby league is like, like I said, I want to, like if we're going to get anywhere in the game, we need, we need to expand because I'd, I went to just say I'd go overseas. I went to Ibiza a couple of times. Mm. That was fucking mad. Oh, bro. And then I was chatting. Bro, I, I was in a few pool that. parties, yeah, and yeah. then like you start mingling with people, and you start chatting to like um, you know people like chicks from London or yeah. chicks from France or whatever. Yep. And you tell them you play rugby league, and then they kind of go, mm-hmm. "What?" <laughs> like they sort of look at you. They look down. Like you, first you say you play rugby, yeah, because over there if you just say you play rugby, yeah. They sort of get the. If you say rugby league, they don't even really know what you're well, talking sport about. Is, yeah, 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 they don't even know what the sport is. So when I said, I'd just go, yeah, I play rugby, and they go, oh, who do you play for? Like, oh, I know a few of the London teams. I yeah. said, oh no, well, I play the thirteen aside team. Um, we're in we're in the north of England. I, I live like Wake Wakefield, and they just go, yep, <laughs> and move on. And like that's it. that's how we're considered. Like, yeah, absolutely. I know. Like even in France, same thing. Like Catalan Dragons are like, are they in the Super Fourteen? And I'm like, oh no, that's that's 15 aside. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I said we're in the Super League, <laughs> and then they'll be like, and then the girls will just go, oh, okay. no, no, no I'm, like, I'm not into that. And then and that's just not. I'm not just talking about that in terms of like picking up chicks or like whatever. Just, but that's just the mindset yep. of everyone around in the north of like nor- yeah. northern hemisphere. Fuck like, no. We're not even close to like rugby union and obviously football and basketball and all those sorts of things. It's like um, it's like a dude coming to from Ireland coming to Australia and telling chicks he plays Gaelic football or something. Yeah, that's it. People would be like, "Bro, what the fuck is yeah. Gaelic football? What are yeah. you talking about?" And they're like, "Well, it's like football, but it's with sticks and yeah. or some shit." And you'd yeah. be like, "Bro, I don't even know what the fuck you're talking about." That's but what it's like. That's ex- that's per- that's perfect perfect yeah. way of explaining <laughs> it. Like if you can, yeah, because they probably know Gaelic footy a little bit more better in Melbourne. Yeah, like you know rugby league a little bit better in the north of England. Yeah, but if 
if you go to Sydney and say, like, try to, like, <laughs> speak to people about playing Gaelic footy, they'd just go, what? Oh. I'm a pro Gaelic footy player. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? But, like, it would be massive in Ireland, Mate, you know? Massive. like absolutely. Yeah. Um, okay, so the decision to retire, did that just come of, like, you know what? This, I'm, I'm done with this. Yeah, part, so um, I started to feel it at the back end of the uh, 18. Um, the thing was, we were still, like, competing in games, so there's a little bit to play for. We are going for that top four. Yep. But I was, like, before games, I was... No disrespect to this few of the teams, but we played a few of the lower ranked teams. Yeah. And I was just going like, I don't even want to be doing this. Yeah, fuck this. Um, and then, like when we played the like, the bigger teams, it was sweet. But I got, I got, yeah, I sort of got to that realization that I just didn't want to keep doing this for a paycheck anymore. Yeah. And then I, I come home and then come home for Christmas and New Year because that was the first time I'd missed Christmas and New Year for four years while I was over there. Yep. Because we would always get get that same break. It's the same break over there. So you get home for October, November. Yep. But when you come home, you don't really get to hang out with friends and family because they're all working yep. or going to training or whatever. Yep. So when I come home for Christy New Year, I spent two full weeks with friends and family and I was just like, fuck this. I don't want to go back. This is that, home. This, yeah, this is home. I'm home for Christmas. Yep. But I said, you know what? I'll just give it one more year. It's, I'll make sure I'll, I'll make sure of it. And then I went over there and then started the season. Um, and then... Yeah, got got a few games in and just realised, nah, I've had enough. Yeah, it's um, I should I sh- in a in a way I should have just stayed, but it was good because then I went back over there, finished up, yep. got myself a little payout, did a little bit of travel with that payout. Yeah, went to experience the world. Yeah, man. went to a few more a few more of the countries that I hadn't <laughs> been to, so yep. that was cool. Man, I I, I want to travel so bad. I fucking it's literally the one one thing I need to do like in my life that so like I wish I'd have done that but anyway mm. um, so you come so you, you retire you come back and basically so when you came back had, were you already listening to podcasts and that or yeah was, so yeah. I started listening to podcasts my first year in France because yeah. I was fucking listening to the radio yeah. um, and I didn't understand what people were saying <laughs> yeah, so yeah, yeah. I was like I need to find like a yeah something to get into so yeah that was about four years ago now and then yeah. um a few of my mates have recommended Joe Rogan. Obviously, he's the OG yep. in the podcast game. And then he just come up on ten years. There you go, bro. Ten fucking years. That's yeah. OG in the podcast. Yeah, man. yeah. And then um, also, I love me NFL and NBA. So yep. I was, I got into like heavily into fantasy and all that during these mm. years as well. Yep. I had so much time on my hands over there that like I was doing <laughs> like I was ripping into like watching so but the thing is that you could watch NBA and NFL at really good times. It was like seven thirty, eight, eight o'clock at night. So I was yeah. I had NFL Game Pass and NBA Game Pass. So I was getting all those sorts of things through podcasts and then Yeah, and then I had a few favourites and then sort of just locked myself into them. Yep. But the introduction to like actually doing my own podcast was pretty much Ice's idea. Yeah. I come back and so me and Ice got to know each other about 10, 10, 12 years ago. So during those Parramatta years, yeah. um, Ice got recruited from over New Zealand to come um, play at Parra and he yep. was in the juniors. He's sort of around the circles and anyway, we got to know each other a bit. So we've kept in contact over the years, little bits and pieces. Um, and then uh, he just goes, hey, like, what are you thinking about doing life after footy? Because that's what he's sort of about with his pod. Yep. Started talking about... Um, I was sort of in between. Like, I want to do player management still, mm. but I've got. I'm going to start building towards that properly this year. Mm. Um, and then he just started talking about like you know other interests and like NFL, NBA, and he goes like, um, he goes, why don't you do a pod with us, just talking about you know getting footy players on and talk, yep. talking to them about NFL and NBA. And I said, oh, it's, there's there's no market for that. Like, yeah. how many people would listen? Like, you don't probably get a couple hundred people that obviously just fans of you boys, or maybe you know maybe followed my career or my mates. Yeah. Like, I didn't think. Yeah, my mates. Are yeah, my, all my mates will listen. Like, <laughs> yeah. my mates love it, which yeah. is good. Yeah. Um, and then he goes, no, nah, you'd probably be surprised. Like, he goes, well, what do you got to lose? Like, sort of thing. Like, let's just give it a crack. Absolutely. And I said, you know what? Like, I've had an, I've had zero media training. I was one of those players that never really got asked to do to come up and do the big spiel like yeah. before games or yeah. whatever so um, I said yeah if anything it'll it's a just another another um, challenge and um, we'll see how we go I've always thought I've had an opinion on most things but mm. this is like maybe the perfect platform for it so it's one of those things where like you, you can't lose because learning to speak to people you haven't met before or whatever is such an important skill in any anything in life like I remember at the start when I first started 
you would meet people and I'd be like nervous about it. Whereas like it's been so many years now, I just know that like it's all good, man. Like mm. it's chill, it's cruisy, it's whatever. And so like meeting people now, it's like so much easier. Like whereas sometimes you get a bit in your head about it. You're like, oh fuck, like what, you know. So yeah. there's so many and talking to people, con- con- like conversing. Um, who's the most talented player you've ever played with? Where you've just been like, oh, I'm assuming it's probably Hayne, but you know what? It is Hayne, but it's uh, there's there's someone pretty close, and he's the guy you played, Dave Taylor, man, bro. He could have been the best ever to play the game, easily. Yeah, I, I, played, I only played a year with Dave at um, at Cadlands. Mm. Like just seeing him get around with this, like for a big man, hundred. He's a buck thirty five. We used to give him a bit, yep. give him a bit of flack about his weight and all that. Stuff. So big, but he's so big. But mate, he was strong, fast combination. Like his speed over fucking. 10 or 20 meters is as good as anyone that I've ever seen too. Like right. he, he would probably give Hainsey a run for 10 meter like sprints. Really? Like, like he hell. was pretty quick, wasn't yeah. he? Like he got around oh, a bit. Absolutely. Especially and like holding lighter. the ball in one hand, oh, skillful, right. chip and chase, his cutout ball. Like he want, when he was at Catalans, he wanted to play in the centers. Like, Mate, he could and, though. And I actually didn't think it was that bad of an idea. <clears throat> yeah. Um, because one, it would have saved his energy because obviously, you know, you don't, you don't do as much defending out there, but yeah. He also had like when he went out there and he had he just made a he, we, they tried they tried it for a little bit yeah. and they because uh, we had heaps of injuries and then then I put me out in the centres because he just defensively made a bad few bad reads and couldn't yeah. double D it but uh yeah he Hainsey number one but he's he's a close two you know what and I, surprising I reckon that'd be surprising the most because people don't know pe- how good people he don't was. respect his talent enough well mate he's dry he's a bit like Hainsey in a way like m- imagine what he could have been like if he just actually fully. Um, asserted himself. If he had the training ethic of, say, a Lockie or a Thurston, yeah. Oh my god. Or even like if you if you compare like a Sam Burgess or something yeah. like that. Oh, you know what I mean? Like he's like, he's Sam. Like you know, I tell people. I mean, and you would know way better than this, so I could be totally wrong. But in my opinion, if there is one guy that could go and play NFL, it would be Dave Taylor. Yeah, <laughs> running back or something like yeah. that. What would Dave play? Could you imagine him as a running back just going skits? Like he's yeah. pretty... He'd be like, the, like the fridge, like um, Jerome Bettis. Yeah. But again, I don't know... Like NFL an old that school well. throwback player. Yeah. yeah. I don't know NFL that well, but even like even like a linebacker, because he's yeah. still... Well, he'd be about 130 kegs. They could put about 130. I don't yeah. know it as well, but I reckon if there's one guy that... Because he has the footwork, the speed, be, the size... You know what he'd be? He might be a pretty decent, like, nuggety tight end where... What they do is they're the guys closest to the line, as like sort of like a receiver, but close to the line. Yeah, you get little short dunks, and then they can fucking take off. Like you know, Rob Gronkowski. Um, oh, have I you heard that I name before? That, I've heard the name before. Did you watch a Super Bowl on, the, and you recognize those just gone? The just one gone, just went, and nah. there's guys Travis Kelsey and George Kittle. They sort of yeah. anyway for those sorts of players. If you if you if you know it, like yeah. the game, maybe maybe that sort of role where he's a bit of a like blocker, blocks for the running backs, and then also yeah. can catch a ball. Or okay. whatever. yeah, but I already, I already go up. But Dave Taylor, he, I I was at the Broncos when he was coming through. So this is when he had his best attitude probably in his career. Yeah, and he was. Right. He he could throw he could literally throw a cutout ball thirty meters and it'd be sweet. Yeah. He could offload. He had mad footwork, strong yeah. as shit. Yeah, fast. Um, fast. So yeah, I agree. He could have been anything. Um, favorite rapper of all you've got a, you've got a podcast at twelve thirty, eh? That's all right. Yeah, yeah. we get there. The uh, ice is doing one with Sav and I'm just gonna tr- okay. pop him. What's yeah. the time now? Twelve twenty. Oh yeah, sweet. So put me to get down there. Um favorite uh rapper of all time. Um, Slim Shady, Eminem. He's a go day. Eh? Did you listen to his latest CD? No, no. What's the, how, how long ago? <clears throat> like, I haven't two, really enjoyed weeks? his latest stuff. I'm talking about the old school no, stuff. No, listen like, to his latest CD, I'm yeah, telling you. Yeah, yeah, it's fucking mad. Like, okay. modern beats. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's fucking mad. So, yeah, so I'm, I'm Slim Shady. But, yeah, it's called Music to be Murdered by. It's fucking, okay. it's good. It's really good. Um, and he's got, like, shit with Slaughterhouse on there. He's got, he's teamed up with some of the younger artists and that coming through. Yeah. So, he's, like, really opened himself up to the younger generation whereas yeah. for a few years there he was very he's against it he buy back a, a, a bit against it wasn't yeah, he yeah um, favourite movie of all time Pulp Fiction Pulp Fiction yeah, yeah. Fucking great movie isn't it That's fucking great you know movie. what There's uh, th- we, we have had these chats with footy groups before yeah. you know have you seen the movie Life with Eddie Murphy it's more of a like, yeah, comedy yeah, yeah, in yeah, that yeah, with the, that's um, such a good movie that when, I, th- good when movie. I think about it like, you sort of put it in the comedy rounds but Mate, I've got that hits you emotionally me, though. Me, me and George Defoe <laughs> could quote that movie too. Really? Yeah, yeah. We've got we could go back and forth. Blake Green as well. I went to school with him at Westfield yep. as well. Um, 
Yeah, us three in particular could go back and forth in that movie for years, and I can sit and watch that at any time. I reckon sometimes like movies like that are the most hard to execute because they're funny, but they hit you emotionally. So it's much hard. emotion in that movie, it's mate. It's hard to do that. Yeah, you know what I mean? Because you you can't take a com- comedy serious usually. Yeah, but to have the acting range to like be this fucking idiot. Yeah. But then by the end of it, you're nearly in tears. Going, yeah. Fuck me, dude. Yeah, you do. You nearly cry a couple of times. Yeah, fucking oath. Fucking oath. No, it's a, it's a good pick, life. Um, anyway, I'll let you get to um, your podcast. It's been now 20 minutes anyway. Fuck yeah, me. beautiful. Um, thank you so much for coming on, brother. And yeah, I can't, I'm going to try to tune into more of the, the... It's called The Scope now. It's called The Scope. Yeah, shorten it up to The Scope. Yep. Um, one of his ideas. But yeah, cheers, mate. I'm, uh, I've been listening to yours, so appreciate having me on. Thank you. Boom. Just a bloke in a bar.